my name is Aline, and it's my pleasure to be here this morning with Ellen and Tanya uh, from uh, Nari Health. Can you just introduce yourself quickly, please? Well, I'm Ellen Minapache. I'm a physiotherapist and osteopath. I've been practicing for 20 years and I'm specialized in women's health. And in Nari, I'm responsible for the content and for running the offline clinic. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm a songwriter from Sweden and uh, I'm a mother of two and in Nari I'm responsible for online content and for running operations and basically for everything that needs to be done. <laughs> okay, so can you tell us what is uh, Nari and how was it born? Nari is a passion project. Uh, we are very passionate about female health, about empowering women to live healthy, happy and fulfilling lives as they deserve. But sometimes uh, it's hard for them because of the pelvic health issues, sexual health issues and mental health issues that are interrelated. So our mission is to break this taboo and to bring information and uh, the best treatments available to all the women. Okay. So, yeah, I think I agree with you that uh, women health is quite a taboo, right? Even we, within uh, each other, between women, we don't necessarily talk about like those, those issues. So how are you addressing that? Well, there are basically two reasons why it's a taboo. Um, it's a taboo because there's a lack of information. So sometimes women think that the problem they have is actually normal. Let's say after giving birth, it's normal to have a problem with incontinence or painful sex. and so. You know, they heard about it, it seemed normal, the doctor said it, the, maybe the friend said it or the mother said it, and so they just shut down and accept it. Um, so it's very important to educate, to give easy access to updated and correct information. And then the second thing is that pelvic health or sexual health is very, very, very close linked to self-esteem. So I always say that the big difference is in certain days of our month, you know, I always say when we are menstruating, we don't feel great. Even if we're like looking great and, you know, have a ball gown exactly. or whatever, we don't feel yeah. sexy. And then I always say you can just have good sex and afterwards you go in pajamas to the bakery and you feel fantastic. So our sexual well-being has a big impact on how we feel in daily life. And so in the smaller context, it is if you have pelvic discomfort or pain or just, you know, just don't feel right, it will impact your way of appearing every day, you know, the way of concentrating and your mood. So it has a huge impact on your relationship, your work, your family. So that's why we always say we empower women from deep inside, but it has a global impact. It also has really a big social impact. Yeah. Okay. And I think also something interesting you just mentioned, that sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And how can you help with that? Well, that's what we do with Navi. So we actually decided to combine our uh, existing expertises already, you know, at an offline clinic running and they already developed, started to develop the project, the chatbots, the information online, um, so that really you get the information and then you know, oh, do I have a problem? Because that's when you know, once you're informed, you can judge, you can better judge. There's an easier way to judge. Okay, it's normal what I have, it's not normal. There is a solution, where do I have to go? Oh, I can go there. I so, and, and also the snowball effect and to be able to, to tell someone else. So that's what we, we really want to do is to educate women and then to offer them, yes, absolutely on and offline solutions. Okay. And also, so something I find very interesting when I, when I learn about your, your uh, solution, that you're really bringing like innovation and a, a, a tradition together. Yeah. So how easy is it to get to like healthcare professionals and therapists and have them like adopt and use your solution when it's mixing those two? Well, that's what we're still, we have Figuring to test them with. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we use the AI. Um, you can explain me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, so we combine innovation and tradition because uh, we are taking a holistic 360 approach to female issue, uh, female health issues. Uh, so online, our patients, our users can assess in a private way their pelvic health. They can uh, use our chatbot, answer questions and see, okay, I have an continuous problem or I have a problem with sex or some other problems that are related. And then they can come to a relevant specialist um, that we can uh, relate them to. Uh, they can come to our clinic and they can get the treatment that they, that they need. Because what often happens, you think, oh, I have, a pro I have a problem. So you realize it. You go to see a doctor and doctor is like, 
it's not a problem, it's not a big deal, you know, so many women live with it. So you come to doctor with a problem and you live with a problem that's unsolved and you're just stuck, you don't know where to go and how to solve it. So we are helping this, uh, to solve this issue by educating, uh, by uh, having this assessment uh, online already and by uh, bringing uh, women to specialists. And so, also shortcut the path so they yes. get faster the correct information but so there's there's different sides. So we are developing the chatbot, mm -hmm. but we are also educating the doctors, the midwives, the physiotherapists. So not only the women. It's also the professionals. Okay. They need to be educated because some of them don't know, and some of them they can become therapists themselves. So they can even treat. They can be part of the solution. So either they know about the solution or they can become part of the solution. So that's definitely also a big part of Nari Health concept okay yes. yeah but naughty house is not only it like the online solution is not only a chatbot it's also educational platform for users and for professionals so everyone who is interested who's curious who wants to know more about uh, pelvic sexual mental health they can come and they can get the quality information okay fantastic and so we here in spain in barcelona why did you choose Spain and why Barcelona have hub? Because your office is here and Barcelona have hub. Well, look around. <laughs> Do we need to answer? I know, I don't need to be convinced. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's a, it's a great ecosystem here that combines so many wonderful startups and big farmers as well. So we all connected, we talked to each other. There are wonderful events like this one, uh, you know, what else can we wish for, you know, because there's a synergy in this uh, communication and in this co-working, so it's wonderful. And this is historically such a beautiful healing place. Maybe Helena can elaborate a little bit about <laughs> the architecture. Yeah, so we mentioned the word architectural healing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Again, when we met, there was something, sometimes, you know, just the stars align, right? And um, when I came as a tourist, I always thought it must have been really amazing to be a patient here when you're, you know, lying or just resting in those round rooms and overlooking beautiful architecture exactly. and, and, you know, orange trees and uh, lavender. And um, so I just, you know, thought it was beautiful. But when I became part of the hub, it became more and more obvious to me that um, this needs to be more even empowered, this area, or re-empowered. Um, because what's fantastic is that with this hub, this health tech hub, we really have the potential to combine, I said, the, the present and the future. So all the development that is happening and using what's already existing. And I think that's really important. Also. And, and people from the health industry, are sometimes when I'm talking about therapists, are worried about all this technological advancement because we think, oh, you know, what's going to happen to us? And, and then you have the tech people just saying, you know, we're going to de develop the most you know, crazy app. But I really think that the power, really the, the, the huge impact that will happen is when we combine both together because it's complementary and there's no competition. So for me, the health hub, we're doing it in a micro way because we did open a small um, offline clinic so patients okay. are coming in uh -huh. and are being treated here and um, so it's just as I said earlier we're just testing so how are we going to reach out to uh, doctors and clients well we're doing this way right now in an organic way and see how the reactions are we don't know what's gonna happen but what's for sure is that the few clients that have arrived yet because we just opened they already said just walking through here yeah. it's already you arriving and you come in another state you arrive at another state at the treatment and Fantastic. for me it's it, that's that's what holistic medicine should be all about technology tradition architecture just human you know humanize everything so I've got, I had um, I was lucky enough to to visit your your, your clinic here your office and, and yeah, I, I could really uh, identify with that I think it was really relaxing when you enter and uh, very peaceful yeah absolutely Thank you. <laughs> um, one question I wanted to ask you so um, there was an increase uh, an increased focus on women health and mental health especially like say 2019 there was a 750 million investment in the space and it's uh, forecasted to to reach like 50 billion by 2025 um, what do you think explained that that uh, that increased interest and why now well it's uh, been historically very underserved market uh, female half of the uh, world population uh, female um, 
all the trials has been done on male. Everything was about men's health, not the woman's health. And some time ago, people realized that this is wrong, you know, because some uh, medicine, they don't work exactly the same way for women as they do for men. Um, plus many uh, female issues, they are still a taboo. So now we are at the time at many movements, uh, liberating uh, movements, breaking the taboo movements that allow us to develop this um, uh, technologies and our approaches. So, and um, people of course see this underserved market as uh, entrepreneurs, as investors, and they just trying to fill the need. Some are there, uh, you know, for a reason, we come with a reason to change uh, the world, to make it a better place. Some just, you know, jump on the money, <laughs> on the money train. So, but whatever they do, uh, they are right, the tendency is great. Um, some will survive, some will not, but we, we, we see a very good trends uh, with the companies like Mutu System, established uh, companies like LV, uh, the most funded uh, FemTech startup in the world. So we are really hoping that we are going to be part of this movement and going to make a real change for women's health. I think also there's been a global movement, not only in the health industry, but also politically. I mean, we've had, you know, Me Too movement. We've had several governments who made 50-50%. So I think it's just, you know, again, star lines, many different levels in, in, in the world and different systems chose or changed the focus. And so it just, you know, exploded in a way, which I think it's great. We're still far away, far away from having equality, mm -hmm. but at least it's starting to move. And I think the equality starts when we recognize we need each other. Um, if it's men and women, it's tech or uh, tradition therapy. So um, we're just happy that it changes. Definitely. Exactly. It no, just sounds, great. It sounds great. If it's true, it's absolutely. great. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, it's a great moment to, yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, maybe as a conclusion, what would you like to say to the, the uh, women who are going to watch that video? To ask questions, to move. The more questions are asked, the more answers will need to be out there, will be needed to be solved, to be given. So don't give up, just ask. And so there's so much happening right now that every day something new is being done. Also, what is possible, we don't know also in the hub, what's going to happen within here, what can we do, how can we use, you know, the, there's a lot of potential. So we'll see what happens, but please, to women, if you have questions, ask. There's no wrong question. Um, there's maybe not the right answer yet, but that's how we develop, by, by questioning. Yeah, I would add that as women, we tend sometimes to put ourselves uh, um, kind of behind our families, uh, our husbands. So it's important for us to realize how important it is for us to take care of our women's health because we are a pillar of this community of of our families of everything. So it's important to to take care of us first. Fantastic. And uh, how can people get in touch with you? Right now it's nari.health okay. or hello at nari.health. Okay. So we are on yes. Instagram, we are on Facebook. Or just come in, just come in to Modernista, yeah. <laughs> to the health <laughs> hub and you'll find us. Yeah, you don't have to pay for a ticket, you know, just <laughs> give us a call, we'll give you a tour. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful place just to visit. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ellen and Tanya, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure and wish you all the best for, for Nari. Thank, thank you. you.